If you could vote tomorrow to save 90% of the babies destroyed by abortion, but yet you'd have to allow rape and incest abortions, would you do it? Restoring hope, open my heart to sing, taking the darkness inside. after the hour this is restoring hope live a ministry dedicated to the service and honor of our father god to our savior jesus christ and you serving you with some pretty um fired up conversation sometimes but we think that's what the lord wants uh this is not your grandmother's christian radio talk show oral roberts uh, this is the tough subjects, the tough topics, and I've got a panel with me today, Bob Montserrat, the cat in the hat, Kelly Lindbergh is here, we're being produced by Eric and Maddie, and here's the question. Oh, oh by the way, uh, Dr. Hartwig's on the phone, right? I'm on the phone. Where where are you, where, where, where are you vacationing today? <laughs> I am in the great state of Iowa, I'm in Spencer, Iowa, we just got uh, done uh, at the Clay County Fair, the world largest ag fair in the country i'm told but did your uh, wife parade you around as the biggest boar <laughs> <laughs> that was funny that was funny i knew you'd like that uh, all right so yeah, serious yeah, topic good. today serious topic and i have to tell the listeners up front and i'm going to remind you as often as i can i'm, I'm going to take the devil's advocate position today because quite frankly i can't find i, I can find very few people to agree with me but I think it's a relative conversation given the days and times. Now, here's the big conversation. Compromise our convictions. One of my favorite questions to ask a pastor or ask anyone is tolerance the characteristic of a man with no convictions? As Christians, we are somewhat intolerant to compromise our beliefs. One of them is this, and we're going to start with the abortion issue. Later on, we may move to some other social issues that we're dealing with. But we're going to start with this. I don't know if you know this, but less than three operated on are for rape and incest. So if you look at that a different way, you could save 97% of the babies from murder through abortion if we would compromise the 3% for rape and incest. Oh, yeah, there are the Fruit Loops on the far left that, you know, want to tell you that uh, a woman's body, uh, she can do anything she wants with it. Yeah, take off all your clothes and run down the street, lady, and tell me how that works for you. Stand on a street corner under a light and sell your body for sex. And, and tell me you really have control over your body in this society. You don't. People always like to say, well, I'm pro-choice. I'm for a woman being able to make the right choice. I am too. Choose to not have sex unless you're willing to have a baby. Seems pretty simple to me. But I digress. This is the question. If you could vote tomorrow in an election that would make abortion murder or manslaughter other than rape and incest, would you compromise your convictions as a Christian and save those 97%? Now, I've got somebody on the phone here I want to talk to. Eric, bring her on. Her name is Rebecca Kiesling. And I have had the opportunity to interview Rebecca several times. Rebecca, how are you on this fine Sunday? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm good. Um, Rebecca, you are a product of rape, correct? Well, product is kind of a dehumanizing term, isn't it? Okay, what would you <laughs> tell me how you you'd know? say it? <laughs> um, you know, I'm I was conceived in rape, and I'm a child of God. Okay. 
I, nice. I like that better too. Nice, nice. I like that better too. Um, hey, anytime you can put Mac in his place, hey, you've done a good job, Rebecca. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean he's just saying what most people say, I and mean, people just like they're so used to calling children who are conceived in rape either product of rape or the rapist baby, or I mean some people say things worse like demon spawn, horrible reminder of the rape, mm. and. Oh my. Um, you know, people are just so used to it. And a, lo- you know, a long time ago, we used to call children um, who were conceived out of wedlock bastards, or we used to call them um, yeah. illegitimate child. Yeah. And I mean, we, we stopped doing that, but, but they still do it to the child conceived and raised. Yeah, that, that's still- interesting, Rebecca, because I am a child of a, um, um, uh, a fling between a freshman in college and an instructor. I was uh, uh, born, this was 1959, so there wasn't any legal abortion. I was born, uh, placed in the household of some amazing people. I call them mom and dad. I have a trem- great sister, great brother-in-law. But I can remember as a kid, I'd, I'd, I'd be teased. They'd call me a bastard, you know, because I was, an, I was a quote-unquote illegitimate child. And, you know, I used to, I'm a family law attorney. I, I closed my law practice to do the speaking I do, but... When I had my practice, they changed the law from the Paternity Act to the Parentage Act, but the legal definition of the child remained the same, a child born out of wedlock. But in the 70s, like it it used to be called the Illegitimacy Act, and the legal definition for the child was illegitimate child. And that sounds horrible, right? But in the 30s, it used to be called the Bastard Act. And the legal <laughs> definition of a child born out of wedlock was bastard. And do you know who fits that legal definition? Mm, tell me. Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Jesus fits that legal definition. He was born out of wedlock. Right. And would, yeah. you, would you really call him that? Really? You know? But we stopped doing that as a society, thankfully. Um, but they still do it to the child conceived and raised. People still think nothing of demonizing so, us. So, Rebecca, how did you find out that you were a product of rape or I, that you were... Ah, of- you just said it! Oh, you know, just I've said it, it, Hartwig! I know, I know. Okay. Oh. <laughs> how, how did you find out that... that how, did you, how did your mom and dad or mom come and tell you, you know, you were conceived in rape? Yeah. I learned when I was 18, I petitioned for my non-identifying information, and mm-hmm. it had everything about my birth mother, except for her name, all kinds of details. And all it said for my biological father was that he was Caucasian and of large build. And of course, I thought that sounds like a police description. And thought it over, talked to family about it. What could this mean? And nobody wanted to think it was rape. You know, just no, no. I'm sure it's some explanation. And. And then I finally called up the caseworker and just asked her, you know, was my mom raped? And she told me, yeah. And I didn't want to tell you. Was your and mom I, living at the time so you could ask her? Yeah, I met her um, within a year. And she was thrilled to meet me. When I finally talked to her on the phone, she said to me that she was sorry to hear that I already knew. But she filled me in on all the horrific details. And it was truly a worst case scenario. She was 4'10, weighed 90 pounds, really petite, single mom, heading to the grocery store at night. He jumped out of the bushes with a knife, abducted her. She described for me in graphic detail how he brutally raped her. And that's how I was conceived. Rebecca Kisling is our guest today. She's going to join us for the uh, second part of our program today, also as we have a tough conversation. And if you've got young ears in the car or close to the computer or next to the radio, I I hope you let them listen. I I hope that you're the type of parent that can explain to your 13-year-old daughter or your 13-year-old son uh, uh, what we're talking about here. Because it's important, in my opinion, uh, my humble opinion, that our teenage children understand the consequences of this type of behavior. The question is this. If we could get rid of 97% of the abortions in America only to compromise abortion legalized for rape and incest, would you compromise your conviction as a Christian? We'll be back. Rebecca Kiesling is my guest, and it's your voice I want to hear at 1-855-244-0077 at Restoring Hope. 
things come in threes. You meet your soulmate, you get married, you have your first child together. Good things do come in threes. And Take Shape for Life is no exception. Your free personal health coach, a professional weight loss coach, the MetaFast 5-in-1 plan for healthy weight loss, and the Habits of Health system for a lifetime of good health are three of the best gifts you can give yourself. Together, they lead to the healthy weight control that helps you take shape yeah. for life. Lose weight safely and quickly four four. with the MetaFast 5-in-1 plan, I, I, featuring medically formulated nutritious and delicious meal replacements by MetaFast. You'll choose five MetaFast meals each day, one every two to three hours. Because you eat frequently, you're never hungry, and your metabolism stays revved. Many of the MetaFast meals are portable, so you can fit this diet into even the busiest lifestyle. You also get one lean and green meal to eat at the time that works best for you. For the lean, you'll have lean protein. The green is servings of low glycemic vegetables. Depending on your source of protein, you'll get some healthy fat too, and that'll help keep you full and satisfied. While MetaFast meals are delicious and nutritionally sound, don't think you'll be committed to meal replacements forever. The 5-in-1 plan is just the first phase of our program. In the transition phase, you'll begin to add more fruits, vegetables, and protein. And on maintenance, you're ready. Optimal health is yours. To speak to a personal health coach, go to RestoringHopeLive.com and click on the Take Shape for Life tab. Then, let us know about your healthy new lifestyle and how good you look and feel. And thanks for listening to Restoring Hope Live. That's RestoringHopeLive.com. The Pocket Testament League presents Pocket Power. Read, carry, and share the gospel every day. There's no easier way to share your faith than by giving someone a free gift, the Word of God in a compact, pocket-sized gospel. I'm disabled and staying in a hospital, but I may meet more than five people in a day and can give them a gospel. I ask everyone if they know Jesus. Uh, Maddie, Hello, I need I'm you to Mike come in Brickley, and do this again. President of the Pocket Testament League. We'd love for you to experience the joy that comes from giving someone the inspired Word of God. We'll make it easy for you. Won't you join us? We found the Gospels to be an excellent tool for leading a person to the Lord. We give away several books each month at the soup kitchen. Thank you for making it so easy for us to witness to the less fortunate. What are you waiting for? Read, carry, and share the gospel every day. For more information, call 1-800-636-8785 or visit pocketpower.org. That's pocketpower.org. Hi, this is Dr. Mike Hartwig, and on Restoring Hope Live, we like to focus on relationships and the power that lies within. Obviously, the most important relationship is with Jesus Christ. Someone once told me the second most important relationship is with your spouse. I think that's true. In case you haven't noticed, marriages are in trouble today. One of the things we've learned is that if you don't constantly work on your marriage, it can quickly fall apart. That's why several years ago, my wife and I put together a first-rate marriage seminar that we would love to partner with you and your church to bring to the people in your community. Simply go to RestoringHopeLive.com and send us an email requesting more information on the marriage seminar. We'll get it out to you as soon as we can. Or check out the seminar tab at RestoringHopeLive.com. That's RestoringHopeLive.com. Restoring Hope Live, heard every Sunday right here at 1 o'clock Eastern. Jill, why don't you tell the class what you did this weekend? Well, my dad and I went in search of some magical minnows and found a zillion of them in the stream from our lookout rock. Then my sister and I escaped from an evil slug king and went back to my super twig fort for safety. Then we told stories till it got dark and the Big Dipper led us all the way home. Whoa. Where were you, Jill? We went to the forest. It's not that far away. Ask your parents to take you and your friends to the forest this week. It's closer than you think. Check out discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ag Council. Restoring hope, open my heart to sing, taking the darkness inside, revealing your light, restoring hope. Welcome to another great Sunday here on RestoringHopeLive.com. I'm J. Michael McCoy. And if I haven't told you lately, thanks for listening. Love this job. Couldn't do it without you. This program is also available online at RestoringHopeLive.com. And we have a live chat. That's what Bob Monserrat, the cat in the hat, watching the chat does. So if you've got a comment, you don't want to call in or you find the lines are jammed, you're also welcome to jump on RestoringHope.com. 
live.com and give us your comments right there on the live chat. All right, my guest today is Rebecca Kiesling, who uh, is an amazing child of God who happened to find out when she was 18 years old uh, that her father uh, raped her mother, and that was how uh, God brought her into this world. Now, did I say that better, Rebecca, this time? Is that more? Is that better? <laughs> you're, you're trying. I give each other for trying. Um, you know, I'm part of a whole community of people who are all conceived in rape or women who became pregnant by rape, and we do not like to give um, that man the term father, you know? Um, he's not my real father. My real father is my father in heaven. But, um, you know, he was the rapist. He's the man who raped her. And if I have to describe it, I'll say he's my biological father. But um, You don't even want to go that far. Would, yeah, would not even call would not even call him father, you know. All right, so here's the question we're having today. And, and, and this is a tough conversation. And you may be, i got to be careful here, you may be one of those people that thinks this topic is unacceptable. Uh, you've probably already turned off the radio, and I, I, I hope you didn't. I hope you're still with us because I need your voice. But the fact of the matter is that 97% of the abortions out there are for birth control. 3% are based on rape and incest. So as a Christian community, would we be willing to compromise and save those 97%? and still allow abortion for rape and incest? Obviously, Rebecca would say no. She's living proof that we shouldn't. But what well, do you I, say? I heard it um, said that we're 1%, but that 2 to 3% represent the hard cases, so that includes rape, incest, life of the mother, and special needs children. Okay, all right. All right, let's go to the phones where Frank is standing by. Frank, you're live on Restoring Hope Live. What do you think? Well, as someone who thinks the only exception for abortion should be the life of the mother, I have no problem as a Christian using the, the, the democratic tactic of progressive, progressivism to chip away at that right, much like they tri chip away at the rights of the uh, lawful gun owner. Uh, with the cases of Kermit Gosnell, Scott Peterson and Ariel Castro being fresh in the news here of late, I think the time is right. Because Ariel Castro over in Cleveland got charged with aggravated murder. Okay? What did he aggravate murder? Are we saying now that unviable tissue masses are life? If we are, it's time to start chipping away at these rights systematically. And you, and you think this would be a good way to start? I think this is the perfect opportunity for us to start the conversation and the, and the ball rolling because the, 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 the radical feminists have no answer. They have no answer to that. But to sit silent while a man gets a thousand years, a thousand years in prison for committing aggravated murder for the induced abortion. And then Kermit Gosnell was, was, was inducing labor and causing these babies to born to be born live and then was clipping the spinal columns with scissors. All right, Frank, I appreciate your uh, uh, your comments. Uh, Rebecca, anything you want to uh, say to Frank? Yeah, you know, I understand that, you know, people think that you have to compromise in order to get this legislation passed, but it's really based upon faulty premises. It's really not true. I'm from Michigan, which is a purple state. OK, by no means it's like, oh, well, Michigan's a red state. So, of course, you can do whatever you want there. Not at all. But Michigan, in the history of its law, has never had a rape exception of any kind. And right to life in Michigan is considered to be one of the strongest right to life groups in the nation. We have over 140 affiliates. Um, we pass all kinds of model legislation and we don't have exceptions because the leadership here decided a long time ago in the early 70s that they would be a no-compromise organization. And they have a strategy to achieve that, which means you do not get their PAC endorsement if you compromise, if, you, if, you're, if you're an exception legislator. Rebecca Kiesley is our guest today. She's live in Michigan. She is an amazing child of God who was conceived in rape, and now she goes out there every time she can to tell us why uh, abortion uh, for a rape victim uh, is still murdering uh, an unborn child, uh, fighting hard for personhood. Kelly Lindbergh is in the studio with us today. He's a father of five? Uh, biologically three. Okay. 
Um, what do you think about this? I mean, you're, you're a devout Christian man. Would you be willing to compromise your conviction of abortion is murder to save 97% of those children? It depends on what I think it depends on what you consider a compromise. Anything that would take and anything that would take 97% of the abortions and make them, you know, obsolete, I'm obviously in favor of. Um, I think the sooner that we can we can expose this heinous act for what it is and make it illegal, the better off we'll be. Uh, and I don't waver on that at all. Um, the three percent, the gentleman brought up earlier that it's a good start. I agree, but I do think that we continue to. Um, I just I, even okay, with you, you uh, even with it being three percent, I don't I don't want to waver and just say, well, that's okay. Because it's still what it comes down to is the taking of an innocent life. Rebecca, what did you say there? I have five children as well. And like you, two are adopted and three are biological. So, you know, wow, we have a lot in common. Um, But your five children, if there was someone who was threatening to murder all of your children, okay, if they're being held hostage somewhere and some hostage negotiator is telling you that, look, we can save four of them out of the five. You know, if, if, if you just agree that they can kill one of them, if you would agree that they can kill one of your children, would you allow that or would you say, no, I, I am going to fight. I don't care. If I, they, and if he said, you can wait right, you can, you can do it right now and be guaranteed if we but, do it right now. But, Rebecca, that's the law of the land. One. But if you wait, you might be able to save all. You might not. Now, why wouldn't you wait? You would wait. You would wait and do everything you can. You would find another strategy to save them all. You would not compromise. Dr. Mike, jump in there. Well, yeah, the, the, the reaction I would have is, is that I wouldn't be agreeing. I mean, if it was up to me uh, right now, and I, it was a clear, it was clear that I, I could save all those people if I would just simply pass on the, on the uh, rape a- aspect. With the, and I would say that there's still hope out there that there was, there was, there was able to, there, there would be a, uh, down the road, I would be able to get, get the, get the same thing to happen for rape. I, you know, I, I, I understand where we're coming from, but from the same point, I think that if a person, it doesn't matter what the, how a, a baby is conceived, um, as far as the integrity of the baby, I think um, that that's a moot point. But right. I think if, if the only way that I have an opportunity to save 97% of the people out there that are being killed in abortion is to, to allow the rape aspect to, to be allowed, I'm probably going to go err on the side of practicality. All right, let's go to Tom in Arcadia. Tom, about a minute and a half. Uh, what do you think about this idea, saving 97% and letting three go? Well, I, I've got an idea for a compromise that I think might, might actually do some good. You uh, bring the young lady who wants the abortion along with the young man before a judge to explain why they think they should have the right to do this, and you will have them watch films of the procedure and films of women who had abortions a long time ago and how they now feel about it and, uh, you know, just strip away what all these euphemisms uh, that we're using for this procedure and that let them actually see the truth. <laughs> yeah, but, What's Tom, the happen? left is never going to allow that. I mean, th- Why not? Hey, it took a judge to give that Castro a thousand years, uh, so why not bring them before a judge? It's, you know, all right, if you want to do this... Uh, we, why can't we pass a law to make that happen? Tom, I think it's a great idea, and I wish we could make it happen. It is. I think it's a wonderful compromise. Rebecca, what do you think of that? To Rebecca, are you there? That they have to, you know, I've heard all kinds of ideas in the pro-life movement, like say that they have to go to pregnancy centers and get an ultrasound first. Well, then you're, you're involving the pregnancy centers in the abortion business, business because now they have to sign off. They have to sign a death warrant that they came to the pregnancy center and got counseling. I would never sign a death warrant for a baby's death. You can't involve innocent people, judges who are pro-life involved in this stuff and sign off that you, you, you made them watch yeah. this and now they can go get yeah. an abortion. Yeah, I, yeah I agree with that. All right, you guys hold on. We'll take our uh, second break and we'll be back. Rebecca Kiesling is on the air. Tough subject today. I hope you're hanging with it. It's your voice I want to hear. The phone lines are open, one 855 244 0007. You're a devout Christian, follower of God. Your government comes to you and says, Here, Mr. Christian, if you'll compromise 3% of the babies for abortion who were conceived in rape and incest, we will outlaw abortion for 97% of the other cases. Would you, as a Christian, 
Compromise? Are you tolerant enough to compromise your convictions to save those 97% babies? We're coming back live here on RestoringHopeLive.com, powered by WebcastOneLive.com. Restoring Hope. children. We say the pet of allegiance together. You see me around the neighborhood and you tell me that I'm a pretty good kid. Well, I'm one out of every five children in America and I'm struggling with hunger. This problem is closer than you think. My teacher tells me we can grow up to be whatever we want. I want to grow up to be someone who doesn't go to bed hungry. There's enough food in this country to feed Everybody. Please visit feedingamerica.org today and find your local food bank for ways to help. Every dollar you donate helps provide eight meals for kids like me, quietly struggling with hunger. Together, we are Feeding America, brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. <laughs> this moment of uncontrollable laughter was made possible by a 32-year-old man with to no coordination attempting to execute a simple cartwheel his name is sergeant warner but young james our laughing friend here simply calls him dad the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life take time to be a dad today call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov brought to you by the u.s department of health and human services and the ad council The Pocket Testament League presents Pocket Power. Read, carry, and share the gospel every day. If you've ever failed to share your faith because you just didn't know what words to use, then carry the word with you. I include these pocket testaments in our visitor folders at church, or I give them out on home visitations, or I leave them in public places such as mm, gas stations, malls, stores, rest areas. Hello, this is Mike Brickley, president of the Pocket Testament League. Reading the Bible every day is so easy. When you always have it with you, you won't even need a backpack. You can carry one right in your pocket. What are you waiting for? I witnessed it people with tracks, but also leave them with the Word of God for them to read for themselves. I'm going to let my people at Fellowship know about the Pocket Power Ministry. Thank you for your work in God's kingdom. What are you waiting for? Read, carry, and share the gospel every day. For more information, call 1-800-636-8785 or visit pocketpower.org. That's pocketpower.org. Every day I wake up at 5 to give dad his medicine. Every day I wake up at 5 to give dad his medicine. At 6, I make his breakfast. Every day I wake up at 5 to give dad his medicine. At 6, I make his breakfast. At 7, I shower. Every day I wake up... For those caring for a loved one, we hear you. That's why AARP created a community to help us better care for ourselves and the ones we love. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Here's Dan Celia with today's Stewardship Moment. In Isaiah 55, God makes it clear that his word does not go forth and come back void or empty. He says this, but I shall accomplish that which I purpose. I shall succeed in the things for which I sent it. Listen, I don't know about you, but I have never found a place in all of scripture that when God spoke, nothing happened. Listen, whenever Jesus spoke, it came to to pass in my life, whether it was destruction, healing, or love, something happened when God spoke. When you read the Bible or pray, listen to what God has to say about His will for your life. You've just heard a stewardship moment with Dan Celia of Financial Issues Ministry, helping you plan, give, and invest wisely. For more information, log on to financialissues.org. That's financialissues.org. Restoring hope, open my heart to sing, taking the darkness inside, revealing your light, restoring hope. 26 minutes before the top of the hour live here on RestoringHopeLive.com. I'm J. Michael McCoy. Tough, tough subject today. Thanks for hanging with us. Uh, If you've got little ears listening, I, I hope you're... I hope you're letting them listen. I hope you I hope you let them understand the tragic 
consequence of making the poor choice of having uh, sexual relations before you are ready to have a child. Uh, I, 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 am, I am not a nice man when it comes to the pro-choice group. They don't like me. I don't have any pro-choice friends on Facebook. Wait because a my it line. Sounds like you, it sounds like you are pro-choice. Yeah, I am pro-choice. You, women, men, choose to not have sexual relations before you're willing to have a baby. That's the choice yeah. that needs to be made here. Not, oops. The choice, needs, the choice needs to happen the night before, not the morning after. Right. Now, um, Bob, you're a forensic scientist, and Kelly made the comment that somebody on Facebook said, well, the cases of rape are going to go up. No, I, I think in that case, if in fact we said as a country we will outlaw abortion for every single case except for rape and incest, if a woman comes in and says, I was raped and I need an abortion, you as a, as a uh, um, police world, uh, law enforcement, you encourage and really kind of require women who are going to uh, file a rape case, they need to do that right away. Well, that's correct. Um, you know, we uh, can do DNA. Uh, we would encourage people to uh, not shower, you know, the, the woman not to shower at all and to go uh, to the hospital. Uh, hospitals, I know here in Iowa, we, ha we supply them with uh, rape kits so that they can collect samples. And uh, that way we have a chance uh, to get the DNA of the per perpetrator. And, you know, we also have CODIS database, which is a uh, DNA database that if somebody had a prior record and we got their DNA, we can also possibly do a match that way. All right. Now, let me, let me, let me, let me ask a really tough question. Okay. So a woman comes in and she claims rape. She's cleaned herself up. There's no, there's no evidence. Evidence. She has an abortion. You pull the DNA off of the unborn child and you find the father, the biological father, the donator of that uh, to uh, the woman, and you haul him in on rape charges. Wow. <laughs> I mean, if she's well, claiming she's been raped. Yeah, I mean, you, that's po you can do that uh, from the child because you'd have a mixed DNA of both father right. and mother. I mean, I think, I think if you're going to say it's okay for rape or incest, you've got to hold that lady, that young lady, and the father of that child uh, uh, responsible for rape then. If she says, I want an abortion, I want to kill my child because I was raped. I think we have to get tough on both sides. I, I think that's true, and I think that that— I, I'm all for that idea, but I, you made the comment earlier when the gentleman called in and said, you know, I, I like your idea about going for a judge, but the left's never going to let that stand. I, that, I think it's similar in that. I mean, if we were to say, okay, fine, you can have this, but there has to be some kind of proof, there has to be documentation, there has to be a rape test, whatever— that people are going to say, well, we, uh, we, don't want to, we don't want to relive the agony for them, and, it, and that's never going to fly. Rebecca Kiesling is my guest. Uh, Rebecca, um, you hear a lot in the, the media about the personhood movement. W where do you sit on the personhood movement? Okay, I'm the National Spokeswoman for Personhood USA. But let me just say, I am so disgusted because you guys are talking about us like we're just some kind of pawns. We are not cannon fodder. You do not get to put us out on the front lines and then take a giant step back. How, what percentage do we have to be before we start to matter to you? 50%? 60%? Well, right now you don't matter at all. And you know what? And to Jesus, Jesus talked about this when he talked about do not despise the little ones. He said in the parable of the lost sheep, he said, see do you, that you do not despise any little ones. And he talked about the 99 and the one, and he went after the one, and nobody ever goes back to save the one. When they put those laws in place and they compromise on us, nobody ever goes back to save us to take that rape exception out. Because if we're ever going to be saved, we have to be part of a package deal. But Rebecca. And I, and uh, God would not compromise. God would not compromise. And how dare anybody else? Okay, but right now we lose 100%. No, that's a false. That's not true. In Michigan, we do not have any rape exceptions. Georgia Right to Life went to this model. No more rape exceptions. They, they got a gold star rating last year with AUL. Alaska Right to Life, Tennessee Right to Life, South Dakota Right to Life. You, you have a strategy to save all. Most of these compromised states have no strategy to save all. They panned out PAC endorsements like candy to people who make rape exceptions. All right, let, let me ask you this, Rebecca, and I'm, I'm so thankful that you're so passionate about this. Do you, and don't give me a political answer, please. Do you, in your heart of hearts, feel that in your lifetime, 
Roe versus Wade will not be the law of the land. And once again, murdering an, uh, an unborn child of any circumstance will be manslaughter. Yeah. See, I, I, I so want that to be true. I so want this that year, to be true. This year, but, more laws than ever, even after Aiken and Murdoch's case, um, statements, more laws than ever in 2013 have been proposed and passed with no rape exceptions, more than ever. Because more yeah, people what more in, are in waking up that you don't compromise. People more are standing firm. We're having more statesmen come forward who will stand firm and will not compromise on their faith. And we've had more laws passed than ever despite Aiken and Murdoch. Dr. Mike, go ahead. Yeah, look what happened in the state of Iowa. If I'm not mistaken, they had a law that was coming down the pike, and, and it got basically overturned because of the rape case. I mean, there were there were a whole bunch of it, – it totally divided – this question divided the conservative movement. And because of that division, we weren't able to get anything through. And it just co- totally disconsumed everything, and it's because some of our – they couldn't get that rape exception pulled out of the legislation. Well, then you bring people like me in to help put a face to the issue. You know, because, yeah. again, like, how dare you say that we're cannon fodder? No, no. I don't know what you mean by cannon problem. fodder. Do you, yeah, know, you know what I, cannon fodder is? You put the pawns out on the front line. Oh, cannon like, like a gun. Okay. Out there. You don't get to just throw it out there. No, you're you know, not. But, to the world. but the thing is, is that if... if, if that's not the point. You're, we're, if that's what we're coming across and saying, that, that's not what we mean. But if there are but people that we have an opportunity in, to save, you wouldn't if there are people that we have children, an opportunity to save, we, we ought to go for it. We ought to do everything we can to save the 97% that we can. And, and I take, I really appreciate what you're saying, too, that if we're going to go down that path, we need to make sure we come back and we do something about the, the rape exception. But you don't. And what strategy do you have? In Iowa, Iowa, Iowa Rights Life gives out PAC endorsements to rape exception legislators, okay? They're not they allowed, no compromise. And I love them. I know the people there. They do great work. But right. at this point, they're wrong. They give out... They give out endorsements to rape exception legislators. So when you sit there and say, oh, we have no choice, we have to do it, you're, that is totally disingenuous. Rebecca Kiesling is strategy. my guest today. Uh, also, um, Dr. Michael Hartwig, who's also a pastor, who is my co-host, who is uh, not in studio today, but uh, graces us through uh, the phone lines. Bob Monster at the Cat in the Hat and Kelly Lindbergh. I'm J. Michael McCoy, and it's, it, it, it's just a conversation. It, it, and it really it's not talks. Just a conversation. No, it's not. This is my life you're talking about. It is not just a conversation. There's real people. I'm alive because there were no compromised people in Michigan. I owe my life to those people who refused to compromise. That's why I'm alive. I was targeted. I was almost killed in two back alley abortionists. This is not a philosophical discussion. But your mother never, did your mother ever think about abortion or try an abortion? Yes, she tried to abort me at two back alley abortions. And she told me she would have aborted me if it had been legal. I owe my life to people who refuse to compromise in Michigan. That's the emotion of the conversation. That's why I had Rebecca on today. It's pretty easy for us all to sit around, <clears throat> take 100 marbles in the middle of the room, let 97% of them roll away and have three left and throw them in the garbage because we saved 97. But here you've got Rebecca Kiesling, who is passionate because this is her life. I always tell can people. Imagine, can you imagine if there was a rape exception proposed? Well, except in cases of biracial rape. You know, you save the 999 exchange for the one. And you have to understand in the case of biracial rape, the baby would look more like the rapist, be more of a constant reminder of the rape. I've heard those arguments before. Can you imagine the national outcry from civil rights leaders? How dare you discriminate? And yet people think nothing of discriminating against children like me. I'm tired of it. God wouldn't do it. Jesus wouldn't do it. Who are the least of these in today's society? Is it not the hard cases? Children conceived and raped? Children with special needs? We are the least of these. That Jesus made a priority. Rebecca Kiesling is my guest. Dr. Mike Hartwig on the line. We'll take our third and last break today as we uh, debate uh, uh, an emotional issue, a tough issue. It comes down to this. Are we as Christians willing to compromise our convictions? So many of us say abortion is abortion. It's not the baby's fault if it was conceived by incest or in rape. That baby is a child of God and we should do everything in the world to save it. But all of a sudden you have the left coming forward and saying, listen, 
We'll get rid of the 97%. We'll, we'll not allow abortion to be birth control. But you've got to allow a woman the right to get rid of that child if it's conceived in a violent rape or a horrible situation of family incest. We'll continue when we come back live here on RestoringHopeLive.com, powered by Webcast One Live. Restoring Hope. This is Dr. Mike Hartwig, and on Restoring Hope Live, we like to focus on relationships and the power that lies within. Obviously, the most important relationship is with Jesus Christ. Someone once told me the second most important relationship is with your spouse. I think that's true. In case you haven't noticed, marriages are in trouble today. One of the things we've learned is that if you don't constantly work on your marriage, it can quickly fall apart. That's why several years ago, my wife and I put together a first-rate marriage seminar that we would love to partner with you and your church to bring to the people in your community. Simply go to RestoringHopeLive.com and send us an email requesting more information on the marriage seminar. We'll get it out to you as soon as we can. Or check out the seminar tab at RestoringHopeLive.com. That's RestoringHopeLive.com. Restoring Hope Live, heard every Sunday right here at 1 o'clock Eastern. Hi, this is John Botter. I think every parent with a kid on drugs has said, why would my kid use drugs? It seems so stupid, and it certainly put our family in disarray. There's so much tension and pain in our family because of drugs. Boy, that says it all, doesn't it? That's what happens when drugs invade a family. And you often hear addicts talk about the first hit and how wonderful it was and how good it felt. And after that, they just keep trying to have that experience again and again and again. And then later it becomes survival. They don't even think about their families. They don't care about their families. They only think about getting that next fix. And this is why we as parents who've had drugs invade our families can't spend all of our time saying why, but rather say, how do I get healthy? Find guidance through life's storms. Visit lighthousenetwork.org. Good things come in threes. You meet your soulmate, you get married, you have your first child together. Good things do come in threes. And Take Shape for Life is no exception. Your free personal health coach, a professional weight loss coach, the MetaFast 5-in-1 plan for healthy weight loss, and the Habits of Health system for a lifetime of good health are three of the best gifts you can give yourself. Together, they lead to the healthy weight control that helps you take shape for life. Lose weight safely and quickly with the MetaFast 5-in-1 plan, featuring medically formulated nutritious and delicious meal replacements by MetaFast. You'll choose five MetaFast meals each day, one every two to three hours. Because you eat frequently, you're never hungry, and your metabolism stays revved. Many of the MetaFast meals are portable, so you can fit this diet into even the busiest lifestyle. You also get one lean and green meal to eat at the time that works best for you. For the lean, you'll have lean protein. The green is servings of low glycemic vegetables. Depending on your source of protein, you'll get some healthy fat too, and that'll help keep you full and satisfied. While MetaFast meals are delicious and nutritionally sound, don't think you'll be committed to meal replacements forever. The 5-in-1 plan is just the first phase of our program. In the transition phase, you'll begin to add more fruits, vegetables, and protein. And on maintenance, you're ready. Optimal health is yours. To speak to a personal health coach, go to RestoringHopeLive.com and click on the Take Shape for Life tab. Then, let us know about your healthy new lifestyle and how good you look and feel. And thanks for listening to Restoring Hope Live. That's RestoringHopeLive.com. <laughs> this moment of uncontrollable laughter was made possible by a 32-year-old man with little to no coordination attempting to execute a simple cartwheel. His name is Sergeant Warner, but young James, our laughing friend here, simply calls him Dad. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Restoring hope. Open my heart to sing. Taking the darkness inside.
tough conversation as we wrap up Restoring Hope Live today. Remember, you can go to RestoringHopeLive.com. All of our previous shows, or I think there's 20 of them actually, uh, are right there. You can listen to the past. Incredible conversations, incredible topics. Uh, We always have a star on this show, and it's never us. Uh, Today's star is Rebecca Keesley, who is a passionate mother of five who was uh, unfortunately uh, conceived uh, in a manner that uh, we now call rape nowadays. And she fights hard that this would never happen. And what this is, is what if the left would say to us, listen, 3% of abortions come from rape and incest. We'll allow those to happen. We'll allow the mother to make that choice if we just get rid of the other 97% and we save millions and millions and millions of lives, would we as Christians be willing to compromise that tolerance? See, I think one of the things that maybe got lost for me in the beginning is I am, and I need to make it very clear, I am 100% against abortion, any form, any type, any way. But my 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 thought when I when I brought this up was, if, if I have a chance, it was something like 50 million babies in the last 40 years yep. have, been ab- have been aborted. If we have a chance to save 97% of those with a, with a sweep of a hand and then work towards saving the other 3%, would that, would that not be better than just then if we don't compromise at all, we're not saving anything right now. Now, Bob, you had a question so willing, for Rebecca. You're willing to discriminate. You're willing to discriminate and you're willing to kick me under the bus. I don't, I don't hear that there. It is. Bob, it what is. was your question for Rebecca? Yeah, but if I was in Rebecca's case, I would say the same thing. I mean, you're talking about my life. I mean, you're talk- we're talking about Rebecca's life. Bob? Yeah, uh, Rebecca, I was. Uh, I guess my question to you is that how do we convince, because you really have to go to legislators, um, and even when people vote certain ways in certain situations, they're overruled by the courts in some way or another. So it seems like we don't um, we almost don't have a voice. So how how do you go to the legislators? How do you recommend to to you know get this truth out and to get them to change their ways? Well, Right to Life in Michigan does that. They have a strategy again. Um, when they have a legislator that they get word this happened a year and a half ago that a Democrat was ready to introduce a rape exception. They brought me in immediately. Don't introduce it yet. Can we have a meeting with you? And they brought me in. Okay, I testified before legislatures all across the country where on behalf of personhood because they know this issue is always going to come up. And so they bring me in or Pam Stenzel or someone else who was conceived in rape. Okay, but there are too many states who do not have a strategy and they don't bring us in. And that's why I have this organization, Save the One. We have 25 of us who represent the hard cases all over the country. We're ready, willing, and able. Have, have you gone into other states then to do to oh present? Oh, my gosh. I've, not only have I changed the hearts of people who are rape exception candidates, including president, uh, including during their presidential campaigns, I changed the heart of Governor Rick Perry and Newt Gingrich during their presidential campaigns, okay? And he went on national TV, Rick Perry, talking about our conversation, how my story pierced his heart. All right, and he did not get lambasted for it at all because he put a face to the issue. Rebecca, right. give me your website again, please. It's RebeccaKeesling.com. If you just Google Pro Life Speaker, my website is ranked number one. Okay, Pro Life Speaker. Life speaker. I and want to read you, you something that uh, Darren uh, wrote on my Facebook page, which just touches my heart. He said, My mom was literally in the waiting room at an abortion clinic when she had a sudden change of heart and decided not to do it. I can only imagine, had a nurse called out her name, she would have probably gone through with the abortion. But thankfully, God had a plan for my life and spoke into my mom's heart. She walked out of the clinic, and today I have my own beautiful family. God doesn't make mistakes. He has a plan for every life. And then he quotes, of course, uh, Jeremiah, For I know the plans I have for you, declare the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plan to give you hope and a future. Darren ends by saying, I believe this verse is as much for a mother considering an abortion as it is for her unborn child. And and it's so awesome that his mother chose life for him, but mine didn't, and some of us are in need of heroes. And we are called to rescue those who are being led away to death in Proverbs 24, 11 through 12. And, you know, we're the least of these in today's society. Children conceived in rape are clearly the most demonized, marginalized, stigmatized, discriminated against segments of our society. We are the least of these. And Jesus made us a priority, and he had a lot to say about protecting the least of these. 
and looking after the least of these. So you believe the parable about Jesus leaving uh, uh, or the shepherd leaving his flock of 99 to come after the one is a direct correlation to what you're passionate about, and that is not allowing abortion for rape and incest. Yeah, and he was specifically talking about the little one in that verse. Do that you do not recognize any of these little ones. Rebecca, can I get you to respond to someone maybe is struggling with thinking about having an abortion? Um, maybe they made a mistake and, and they're thinking about ending the life of a child. What would you say to them today? Well, first, you have to hear why she's considering it. So you have to know what her needs are, what's going on in her life, that she would get to this point. And then you try to be, you know, hands and feet and try to meet those needs, you know, for starters. You don't just start talking at a woman, telling her, it's murder, how could you do it? You know, no. You find out what's going on. You enter into the ugly. You get in, you know, enter in her life and be a friend and start to find out how you can help her. In my law practice, I represented for women, women for free if it meant sparing the life of a child. I had women who were pregnant during their divorce for from an adultery or from their husband, and they're, like, terrified. And whatever it was, that was going on, I helped them, talk them through it, and said, it's okay, you know, we'll handle it. Everything's going to be all right, and we'll work through this. And you meet their needs. That's what pregnancy centers do. You know, they don't just immediately start talking at a woman. They find out what's going on with her. It could be a family situation. It could be financial. It could be, you know, she's scared. It could be, you know, just all kinds of stuff, peer pressure. And you start going through and you find out what's going on with her. Is this, the, is this the line of evil that we've drawn in the 21st century, that the left has no regard for the unborn, and, 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 and yet, um, uh, and I can't help but think about the bleeding hearts that get on my Facebook and call into my shows and send me emails, how we should go into Syria, and we should bomb the living heck out of these people because they killed innocent children. And I come back and look at that person and say, you don't care about life. Well, I do, too. I care. Who's going to stand up for those children? Well, what about the woman who's pregnant who chooses to have an abortion? Well, that's not a person. Yeah. The whole Syria thing, I just see it's just so strange because it's all these anti-war people who are they're so pro-Obama. Even though they, they hated war before, they're so pro Obama that they'll like support yeah. him no matter what. All right, Rebecca, you know? I really appreciate you being on the show today. As always, you are an incredible uh, guest, and I look forward to having you back. And maybe one of these days we can get you in here to Des Moines and speak to our legislature and have you live on the program. Great. My other my other um, website is savetheone.com, and it's the number one, savetheone.com. Save the number one. Dot com. Well, save the says, one. Well, yeah, one. Save the one. Right. Dot com. All right, Rebecca, I appreciate you being here. Dr. Mike, any uh, last thoughts before we go? You know, if you're thinking about having an abortion out there, well, there's plenty of resources out there. There's no reason to, to go through that. So if you're listening and you know somebody who's thinking about having an abortion, get the help. Go to that pregnancy center. That's where the real hope lies. Well, and the other thing is, you don't realize it, but every pastor in this country knows of a couple who yeah. desperately want to have a baby. And they're not yeah. able to make one for themselves. Yeah. And, and, and that child that sits in the womb uh, of a woman who's thinking about having an abortion, God has a plan for that child. And that, that God has a home for that child. Reach out to Jesus and ask him for help, and he'll give you the home that your child was intended to be raised in. All right, Mike, I will see you soon. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thanks to Maddie and Eric, our producers, Kelly Lindbergh and Bob Montserrat, my co-host today. Uh, we will see you next Sunday, a very special show next Sunday, live from the Village Church in Texas, Matt Chandler. If you've never heard Matt Chandler before, you'll be a fan of his after next Sunday's show. Until then, I'm J. Michael McCoy, and I just ask one thing of you. Please, today, tonight, right now, just pray.